I rise today with an opportunity for this parliament to try and redeem itself against one of the greatest injustices in 21st century Ontario. The vaccine mandates, submitting oneself to a medical procedure as a condition of employment, the ability to put a roof over your head or put food on your table is one of the greatest assaults on Canadian democracy and human rights. But at its core, the thought of mandates must be offensive to human decency. It's distasteful and it's wrong. Pope Francis said in 2015 that work is sacred. Work expresses human dignity. Work is hope. I believe that work is an opportunity. Work is the most equitable and fair metric in free society. My bill, the Jobs and Jabs Act, is not giving out handouts or benefits. It recognizes the dignity of work and rectifies the injustice, the senseless, unscientific and repugnant injustice unleashed on hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Ontarians. The bill amends the Employment Standards Act to prohibit employers from intimidating, dismissing, placing on leave or penalizing employees because of their vaccination status. The protection of the bill is retroactive to September 1st. In plain English, the bill protects employees against mandates. Now I'm in favor of voluntary vaccination, and that was our choice, Madam Speaker. But we never forced anyone to do anything against their will. And medical choice should not lead to unemployment. Ideological opponents to Bill 6 will say that freedoms are only guaranteed to a reasonable extent. Indeed, that is true, Madam Speaker. The Charter I love and lecture on provides that rights are prescribed and are limited to such reasonable extent as can be justified in a free and democratic society. Private workplaces may not even be subject to the Charter, but they are subject to human rights legislation. But the question to address is whether the mandates can be reasonably justified. My opponents say that it's not a question of freedom, but the reasonable limits on freedom imposed because of COVID-19. For almost a year, the government, public health, and celebrity doctors suggested that healthy human beings are putting others at risk. This was repeated by the Minister of Health in this House. It led to unprecedented hate and division in our province. But much like many opinions and recommendations expressed by government and public health, it's proven to be false. A year-long study out of the UK reported in Bloomberg found that vaccinated people are just as likely as unvaccinated people to spread Delta variant to contacts in their household. By memo of August 31st, 2021, from the chief medical officer to medical officers across the province, Dr. Moore confirmed that the vaccinated have similar levels of infectiousness as the unvaccinated. He then proposed additional restrictions on the vaccinated. But the single most important argument on which this false allegation is predicated came from the suggestion that the vaccinated are less likely to be infected and therefore are less likely statistically to transmit the virus. But the premise on which this argument was built it was false. On February 3rd, 2022, the chief medical officer acknowledged that two shots offer minimal protection against infection. There's minimal difference in the risk of infection between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. So the suggestion that someone's risk of transmission is lower because their risk of infection is lower cannot be maintained. It's false. It was always false. And it was always distasteful. No one is putting others at risk. The vaccine was not meant and does not prevent transmission or infection. The risk of the virus depends on personal characteristics like age, comorbidities, pre-existing conditions, and metabolic health. It does not depend on who stands next to you at the assembly line or sits next to you in a cubicle. This is why two days ago, Ontario did away with the passports. 21st century discrimination and segregation gone, as if it was all a dream. Because the passports don't make any sense, they never did. They don't prevent transmission and they didn't prevent the last lockdown. We were told that once 70, 80, 90% of us are vaccinated, that we'll go back to normal to the things we love. But of course, that turned out to be false, and the passport did nothing except exclude Canadians and leave a stain on our history. If passports don't make sense, then neither do the mandates. So why allow them? Why leave them in place? So people can feel comfortable? Because of people's feelings? Or because this government doesn't want to admit mistake? For the tens of thousands of Ontarians who were suspended or fired, or even more Ontarians who quit or retired or moved altogether. This is not a dream. This is a nightmare. Careers ended, dreams shattered, houses lost, 
Marriage is broken. The mandates are not demonstrably justifiable. They don't do anything except for ruining lives and pit Canadians against one another. In addition to the Prime Minister's hateful rhetoric, the federal government is denying Canadians that fell victims to mandates employment insurance. Honest, well-meaning Ontarians who paid into the system and just want to work are left destitute. The hateful approach of this misguided policy compromised Canada's social safety net. The Premier was asked if it was right that workers who are fired because of mandates don't receive unemployment insurance. The Premier responded that that was a federal responsibility. Shame on him. Shame on this government and any member that supports leaving families without income because of their lawful medical choice. This government which campaigned on open for business and open for jobs needlessly sentenced countless Ontarians to unemployment. And why? Because of politics and cancel culture. Because none of them have the courage to join me and say this is wrong. The Minister of Labour who pretends to stand up for workers allowed the greatest catastrophe in Ontario's labour history. The independent Liberals, the Liberal Party that traditionally stood for democratic values, for individual rights, now says conform to our collectivism or lose your job and be cut out of society. The NDP, the No Democracy Party, they abandoned workers. Leader of the NDP first said that she believed in people's legal right to make a choice, but folded under 24 hours under political pressure. All of this insanity is driven by politics, Twitter and fear. But the desire of elected members to put careers ahead of the interest of the people that they serve. To all those watching at home, the vast majority of MPPs here agree with me, but they have no courage to do the right thing. Our jobs and jobs petition is at 165,000 names. They get your emails, they get your phone calls, but they don't have the courage to call you back. Now is an opportunity to make things right. But I expect that the government or the opposition will make excuses. One of the complaints is that the bill is retroactive to September 1. But why shouldn't it be? If it's a unionized environment, it will save time and money on labor arbitration and folks will be reinstated. If it's a non-unionized environment, it will determine the legal question if it was a dismissal without cause. That is a good thing. There's unlikely to be a financial fallout or burden on business because businesses can mitigate damages by hiring people back. And it will simply restore everyone's position to their original position. If the employee doesn't want to go back to work, they fail to mitigate and they lose on severance. This is basic employment law. Let's be adults and work this out. I asked the Minister of Labor to come and negotiate the bill. I invited him to offer amendments so we can pass it. He didn't get back to me. Any technical or substantive objections to the bill can be worked out and to the workers at home. I'm being technical because I want you to understand the charade that this government engages in. They are spin masters. They don't care about jobs. They don't care about families. They care about looking good and sounding good. They care about looking just a little better than the opposition so they can get reelected on June 2nd. They put politics before people or else they would do with the mandates today. Speaker, through you to every member here, history will judge you. And if you refuse to admit mistake or capitulate to the political pressure and put yourself before your constituents, then don't stand for re-election. Go do something else. We know the mandates are wrong and ineffective. Too many Ontarians were fired or suspended. Too many resigned or retired. Too many careers were needlessly ended. Too many families are unable to pay their mortgage or rent because of these mandates. They caused irreparable damage to our community and to our country. It's time to end this division. It's time to let families heal. It's time to let everyone back to work. Let people work. Hashtag let people work. Let Canadian opportunity shine. Let human decency prevail. I ask every member here, let's end these mandates now. Let's end this nightmare. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you.